This interview has been proudly brought to you by the Cornwall Hotel and Spa, the perfect base to unwind, rejuvenate, enjoy time with family and explore Cornwall. So hello and welcome to Lewis Nichols Live Stories in association with Shane Solomon. And I'm excited to bring on my next guest because this is quite a rare interview because you don't do them. So let's say hello to Max Bowden. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very well. It's lovely. I'm in Cornwall. It's great. <laughs> You've had a good few days so far? It's been excellent. Played yeah, some yeah. golf today? I did, yeah. yeah. I, I smashed my friend, so uh, I'm on positive spirits. <laughs> So this is, you don't normally do a lot of interviews, so we're really happy that you're um, coming on today and talking about your life so far, because, I mean, you've done a lot in quite a short amount of time. It you feels know? that way. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, I've kind of crammed a lot in. Yeah. But um, no, it's, yeah, it is rare. I, I try not to talk about myself too much, because um, I find it boring. Well, we've but, got an hour of it now. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, I better get used to it. <laughs> what I wanted to ask was, growing up, did you always know that you wanted to become an actor? Was it something that you just loved? Was it like your passion? Um, I, I think when you're, when you're really young, I kind of, I, I flirted with, with lots of different sort of outlets. Um, I, I had a lot of trouble focusing as a child, which may come as a shock. Um, so acting uh, was certainly something that my mum my had kind of put me into to release energy and, and form some sort of positive expression. So I, I remember sort of as early as, as 12, 13 thinking that this could this could be something I could shape a career out of um you know th thinking it, it was possible and 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 actively kind of crafting one are, are two very different things so I've been very blessed and very lucky to have kind of got to this point I guess we were chatting last night and I know you mentioned that uh, theatre is one of your big loves mm. you know so what's that like when you do theatre because you're going out every single night doing the same show mm -hmm. and you've got an audience watching you so there's kind of no room for mistakes so do you kind of do you get an adrenaline from that the fact that this is live one take and you just do it my favourite noise is is um, five minutes before the curtain goes up and you can hear all of them voices yeah. in the first eight rows um, or, or they're tittering and they're, um, planning what they're doing tomorrow. And, and then you know that in five minutes' time, there's a courteous respect all across the board in which everyone goes quiet to then watch a piece of art. Um, th that for me is, is uh, I, I know we kind of touched on this last night, the arts and sport are the two things that keep everybody mm. together. And that, that sound for me represents time. It represents a time of appreciation, a time of respect, and um, and I think there's nothing purer. So, so theatre in general, yes, of course, no room for error. You're very exposed, um, but also you're you're at your most vulnerable, and there's yeah. something really appealing and attractive about that. And I think it, it, where with telly, you've you've kind of got you've got your chances to go again, and and. You know what, what? What you do lack is a process. A lot of the time, you know, you don't get to rehearse. You don't get to uh, continue to build your arc. You you kind of go uh, straight with it, and especially a show uh, continuing drama. It's all very impulsive. It's immediate. You know, you've got to be there and present in the moment. Um, I love the process. I, I always find that's the most exhilarating part. So that's why I love theatre. Do you have a preference over theatre and television? So, like, what would you prefer? Uh, I, I would say theatre every yeah. every day of the week, but um, you know that's not to say I don't love yeah, telly course, as well. If anyone's yeah. casting, I still <laughs> love telly. But um, yeah, I think I think it, there's a purity to theatre, and 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 the reason I fell in love with art and acting in the first place was because of uh, of release. I think, and and there's no better release than than having a different reaction every night. You know, it, 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 the thing about theatre, touring theatre in particular, is is you do a play in let's say a military play, you do a play in Portsmouth and you do a play in Bristol, it's going to go down different in Portsmouth because yeah. it's a military town. So all the jokes register differently. And following that sort of history of our country, I find is, is quite, it's breathtaking at times. So let's jump back now, 10 years ago with Waterloo Road. <laughs> now, we, you know, I spoke to you just a little bit earlier about this. Waterloo Road, one of the biggest shows. It was set in Manchester and it was one of BBC's most loved shows. It then went to Scotland and it kind of changed a little bit. It was it was almost like a separate, different show. It didn't have the same feel, but still really good. And you played, of course, Justin Fitzgerald. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? The opportunity were you approached? Did you have to audition? No, it was it was it was it was just, that was just really straight. I was just finishing my A levels, um, so as you do when you're 18 and and impressionable, 
I went to Reading Festival and I'd I'd had a skinful, I think, if I remember <laughs> correctly. I'd had a I'd had quite a heavy weekend. I got I, th- I think I got the uh, the email when I was there saying we've got you a, a self tape for Waterloo Road, and I did it with my mum. And I think she likes to think that she was possibly the star of that audition because she gave it much more welly <laughs> than than I did. Um, but I think maybe it helped me because she probably made me look a bit better in the audition, to be fair. Um, and then, yeah, so I had I had one self-tape and then um, they flew me to, to Glasgow about three days later. And uh, I had another read there and then two days after that back there to, to do a screen test with Neil Pearson. So it was all, it was very quick. Um, yeah. and, and it kind of it kind of layered the ground for what television work can be like. Um, so it was, I remember it being a very exciting time. Well, you, your character was center of the show. And I mean, if I remember your on-screen dad was the head teacher. Mm. So, you know, you were going through so much and Justin was such a complex character. You yeah. know, you didn't quite know where he was going to go. Did you enjoy that character development of seeing where Justin was going to go? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I always find, I always find a real drive in characters who have these multi-dimensional personalities. They have broken homes or or um, a lack of positive support. And there was something that kind of registered at the time. I'd just lost my granddad, who was essentially my massive paternal role. I, you know, he I lived a lot there. And it, it was a really tough time. Um, and I think there was there was a bit of resonance in what was going on in Justin's situation in that his his mum and dad had split up. So he was feeling this abandonment and this loss. And I think it, it, it I, I like to think that these things fall into place right at the right time. And and certainly that was one of their moments. Do you ever have it as an actor where, you know, you just mentioned that you're going through your own situations, your own life struggles. You then go and play a character and you're so focused and then you have to go back home and kind of, oh, I'm back to me going yeah. through this. Yes. Is that difficult? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, I, uh, I, I think I, I, I was kind of moved by growing up by actors who lost themselves uh, or certainly gave a lot of themselves or a lot into their roles. You know, I remember watching Heath Ledger do the uh, do the Joker in two thousand and eight, and and watching Mark Rice, Mark Rylance do Jerusalem in two thousand and eleven. I think watching two actors play really risky, mm. uh, you know, divisive roles, and it it really really kind of blew my mind that these 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 actors could could make these choices and make them make sense, yeah. and I think. It's it's easy to do, especially when the stories are quite resonant to yourself. It's it's easy to lose yourself in in the heat of what you're trying to do because ultimately we're trying to tell a very natural and positive story, or positive in terms of the output. Um, to to continue that um, at a level of consistency is, it, I think, you have to kind of allow yourself to to lose a little bit of you uh, and then regain it. It's very yeah. important to regain it. Was it your decision then to with Waterloo Road when you're you know leaving the show? Did you decide to leave, or did they say, "Look, the, t- the time's up for the character"? No, because- no. I mean, we obviously that was 2014, um, and the show that was the closing of of that era of of Waterloo Road. We we finished in I want to say the August, and that was it. Um, the show then the show then went for obviously quite a long time. Went, yeah. for, went for about eight years. Um, but it was, it was, I think it was the right time for the show to, to finish at that point. It needed to, to breathe some new life into it. And, 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 you know, you always ask after a, after a job, where is that character now? Or what, where do I think they are now? And I don't know if Justin was the right person to tell the next side of that story. Um, but I loved it. It was a great gig. It's a, and that's the pro. You know, I did the Waterloo Road reunion, and uh, we did uh, two separate ones, and I couldn't believe the love of the show. So, I mean, for you as an actor, that must have changed your life in a sense of being recognised, the kind, the the fan love that you get because the show's got like a cult following mm. now. Yeah, it has. It has. I mean, I, it's it's amazing, really, because I I see it as a it's a massive part of my history, but it's a yeah. long time ago. You know, we're talking over ten years ago. I started that job. 
Um, so it, it, to now still have people kind of respect it and go, oh, I remember you from, yeah. from Waterloo Road is, is huge. Um, and it shows the level of audience that it still, it still kind of holds, which is always a good sign. If something still holds 11 years later, you know that you've probably done a good shift. <laughs> well, we've got to obviously talk about Ben Mitchell, uh, EastEnders, the most iconic Who? show. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to that because obviously Waterloo Road, you smashed it there. You played some really complex character and you had some big storylines. So did they approach you for this? Because it seemed like a really good fit to go from Justin to Ben and you were kind of like the right person to do that. Um. I mean, no is the short answer. We, uh, Julia Crampsey, who wonderful Julia Crampsey, who was casting um, EastEnders for many, many years, um, she she brought me in about four or five times in in a year for different roles, and it was like, okay, getting closer, getting closer. It was almost like there was there was someday going to be something that would fit, um, and when Ben came around, it was never pinned as Ben. It was because it was a recast. It was all very, it was all very, uh, very cloak and dagger. So I didn't realize and until pretty much <laughs> two days before I began filming that I was going to be playing Ben. And they obviously, they gave me the chance to walk away, but you can't walk away when the, wow. when the, when the gigs, the gigs yeah. quite that good. Yeah. W- were you ever skeptical because the character Ben Mitchell became like the Sugar Babes lineup? It kept changing. People <laughs> kind of like it's one of many Ben M- Mitchells. So were you kind of like, oh, people are going to be like, here we go, another yeah. recast? Well, w- and most Ben Mitchells do the same dances. As the Sugar <laughs> Babes as well. um, yes, massively. I think I think uh, with a show like EastEnders, it's 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 cultural. It's a part of British culture. And there's a level of expectation that goes with that anyway. Then to then put it as probably the the biggest character ever yeah. in soap history, be his son, is yeah, it's daunting. Yeah. It's daunting, and and also naturally, there's a level of um, there's a level a level of skepticism from an audience perspective when there's a recast anyway, because you associate with whomever has done it before. Um, so, so yeah, there was a level of skepticism. There was a level of fear, but I, I kind of had to rid myself of that pretty quick because it's, it's a hundred miles an hour. <laughs> what was it like meeting the on-screen family? Because I know you've, you've worked with Steve uh, McFadden before when you were just eight. So, yeah. but did, did he remember you from that? Or did you have to say, oh, no, you know, like- no, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, he remembered the gig obviously. Yeah. Um, and then my mum was rooting through old memorabilia. And we found photos, obviously. So we we reminisced many a time, um, but uh, yeah, it it was it was definitely scary. I remember going in there on a Monday morning, and uh, and my first scene was with Sharon and Phil. Wow, which iconic. Pretty much as as it goes, yeah. you are pretty much in the A team of of soap royalty, and. I, I cut Steve's line off in my first rehearsal and he went, Corey's eager, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and that was it, kind of broke the ice. Yeah. And then I felt, I felt like I was, I, was, I was ready to go. You know, it was, it was daunting. I was nerve wracking, but it was, it, was, it was a special moment. And walking onto Albert Square for the first time, I mean, because that's iconic, you know, just the black railings, the sign, the Vic. How did you feel? Was there ever a moment where you stood back and think, like, wow, I've actually done this? I, I had them moments pretty much up until the last day I was there, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I remember I, I was cast over Christmas, so I remember walking out with Julia just after I'd taken the job and uh, walking onto Albert Square in the winter. It's got its own climate. It's so cold. And I remember thinking, wow, this is... This has been a part of everyone's lives for for thirty four years or whatever it yeah. was, you know, and 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 now I'm here. Um, so yeah, it was it was pretty special. Do you ever get told when you're going to be in a duff duff? So you know, at the end, do they say this scene happens brackets duff duff, or do you find out in the edit? No, 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 no. It says fade out um, okay. at the end. At the end. So if you got the last scene, yeah, it will say fade to credits, and um, then you know you got another duff duff. Yeah. Yeah, I, had, I was lucky to have quite a few. I know, you, you had a lot. In one year, you had over 25. Really? Yeah. Wow. Um, so we spoke last night about um, Ricky Champ, and I don't know if a lot of people will speak to you about this, but it's kind of, you had a lot of scenes together in that period of time, and it just worked. You know, you watch two actors, and you think, well, they're smashing it. There's a connection there. It feels very authentic, very real. What was, it, what was Ricky like to work with? Greatest actor I've ever worked with. Really? Period. 
Yeah. Um, uh, Ricky was, Ricky's an anomaly. He's, he's, we're, we're very similar. We are 100 miles an hour um, a lot of the time without meditation. <laughs> yeah. Bring the meditation in, I'm about 75. But uh, it, it, Ricky was an actor who never wants to know what you're going to do. And there's nothing more exciting. Being present, just constantly being yeah. present. And I remember we, a lot of the time, would almost try and, and outdo each other to win the status within the scene because there was there was so much at stake, you know. It, it was it was Ben needed to be on top and Stuart needed to prove his dominance. And uh, because of that, it's like watching a game of chess. Yeah. Now, now at, you know, mask that with the fact that you're playing against one of, in my opinion, the finest actors in the country. It... Um, it was it was so good. It was like a game of tennis. It was brilliant. You know, I also love just scenes with you know the character Auntie Aunt Vi. Vi yeah, 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 yeah. She's yeah. so funny because she would say something. You're thinking, hang on a minute, lovely Gwen. Yeah, it yeah. was quite close to the edge for a. She soap, was. Some of the... Yeah, it was. She was. I mean, I mean, that was exactly yeah. what the role catered for. The, the role was supposed to add a shock factor. Yeah. And also show the sort of the levels that got us to where Stuart needed to be. You know of. of completely crass and and um, lacking of empathy at times. You know, let's not forget, Ricky is so good an actor that he managed to redeem himself from murder. The character Stuart yeah. had, had committed a murder and, and that in soap is normally a red flag, take care, we'll never see yeah. you again. Ricky is that good an actor that he was managed to redeem himself and make the public love him and, yeah. and you know, credit to the guy. I uh, wanted to talk about, obviously, one of the nation's favourite relationships was, of course, Ben Me and, and Callum. Um. <laughs> Ballum. Yes. That, I mean, that took over. I mean, it was trending on Twitter. Everyone, you had fan pages on Instagram. <laughs> it was huge. Did you ever anticipate that this love story was going to be as big and popular? No. Um, no, not entirely. I mean, I mean <clears throat> it was... Uh, what It happened overnight. Yeah, it, we, we had we had this one scene shot in the park, um, directed by Tom Hescott, fantastic director, um, and it was lit. I remember it was lit so beautifully. And that night, Tony and I were sat in the bar, um, and I think they did almost like a screening, or, or or it was on in the background or something. And we just our, we'd been talking through the whole episode. We honestly were just talking, putting the world to rights, talking about crap, probably. And uh, you slowly just watch as our phones died in battery. And we, I think we got over something like 10,000 tweets each that night. Wow. Um, and yeah, it began, it began a journey of tremendous love um, from, uh, from an acting perspective and a character perspective, but also a, a really true and, and lovely friendship, you know. Well, with you and Tony, again, we talk about relationships on the show. It just, that just worked. So did you have conversations on, look, how do we do this justice? How do we make it real? Because yeah. it, it came across like that, you know? And I think that's why there was so much love there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, immediately, really. Um, Tony's a very crafted actor. He's, he's you know, he's, he's well-trained. He's very present. He's also probably the nicest guy on the planet. Um, so... Working with him was was immediately a joy, and we were sat in the producer's office, kind of as this, the scripts came out, and we both had a lot of questions. You know, like we say, there was a lot of there was a lot at stake, there was a lot of pressure, and we kind of penned it all out. And we were sat in there for about two hours and just said, "Look, our duty is to tell this story." And especially, we were both um, we were both straight actors, yeah. Um, and we we said that the, the first first rule is that, that our job is to not think that at all. It's to, it's to tell the story of of these two kind of um, working class individuals who have really struggled with identity, struggled with sexuality, and and to really represent a community that at times has been really underrepresented. And you know, through honesty and conversation, it, it just became second nature. You did it justice, that's for sure. Thank you. I wanted to talk about when Ben first came onto the show, he was quite disturbed. I mean, he wanted to kill Phil. Just, just when he came on? <laughs> I mean, he got a little bit better towards uh, the middle of the show, but I mean, he wanted to kill Stacey, Martin, Phil, but there was such a vulnerability to Ben and you almost he just wanted to be loved and accepted, especially mm. by Phil. So, but were there times for you as an actor where you just was emotionally exhausted because the stories they gave you, it was just, it felt like big storyline, big storyline. Yeah. And it was so big. 
Yeah, no, no, uh, yeah, pretty much from day one to the end. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 you know, it, it, I was I was very lucky and, and blessed with with the support and guidance of the team. You know, um, I think Bill uh, Bill <laughs> is similar to Ben. <laughs> ben is uh, he's trauma bonded, isn't he, yeah. with a lot of people in his life. He's 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 been heavily affected by the things around him. That is tiring. It's emotionally exhausting. And our job as actors is to find the similarities before the differences. You know, I always start with, okay, what can I, you know, I'm thinking, what can I associate with the best? What are these, these kind of dark, uh, right, kill it, you two. <laughs> what, are the, what are the dark points that I can kind of respond to with the most yeah. truth? And, and in doing that, then you start to explore the differences and go, okay, how would I do this yet? Yeah, how would Ben do this? Um, and... You know, I remember that first year. So much was happening so quickly. Um, and, and because of that, yeah, there was, exha- there was exhaustion. There was, there was a bit of burnout. Um, because it, the show works like no other. Yeah. You are always on the go. And, and it, it, things change all the time because it's, it's so fast paced. But, you know, we, we, we had a really strong team and um, it's a great cast. We we are so blessed with the people that work there, and it, it's it's very communal. So so kind of, eventually, what happens is as soon as someone is starting to burn out or get tired, then the baton gets passed, and yeah. you know it's on to the next story that will hopefully cater for for the big build ups and and the big kind of climaxes. You know, has there been a story that you've been involved in which has kind of affected you because you've been through that yourself? Or, or someone around you has been through? Because you look at some of the storylines that you've been involved in, you know, and sometimes I think that must be difficult because I, I would know someone that, you know, they've been through that or I've been through that. So were you ever in that situation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, pretty much the last uh, year of my time there was, was life imitating art to, to an extent. Wow. Um, you know, I'd, I'd, just, um, I'd just lost my best friend to a brain tumor, uh, undiagnosed, it was very quick. And then obviously was having to, to tell this story and emulate this, this circumstance of, of Lola dying from a brain tumor, um, being my baby mum, essentially Ben's best friend. You know, it was, it was, uh, it was very tough. It laid a lot out on the table and it, it exposed me to a lot of vulnerability. Um, which, which probably at the time I didn't navigate well. Um, I was, uh, I was easily kind of, woe is me. I was kind of victim in my own self because I was so angry at the world, and I think because of that, I found it quite hard to step away from what Ben was going through and what I was going through. But you know, in hindsight, I go it, it, from a viewer perspective, it, it probably worked, but I probably wasn't very easy to work with at the time. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's, it's very important for any sort of individual who wants to grow and kind of look at their future rather than th- their moments of weakness to, to kind of accept that and go, look, I, it was, it was a tough old time. Yeah. It was, but, but you know what, I'm, I'm a hell of a lot stronger for it. Um, I was blessed with, with, really great family and really great friends and um you know it was it, it, i feel like i've i've healed a lot post that um and and you know it, it's 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 about growth it's it's all about growth and and as an actor as well you know it, it's a reminder that sometimes we are more important than the project um and to not always allow yourself to get too lost um because getting yourself back can often be hard, yeah. but but yeah, yeah, I think I think that was that was definitely the hardest the hardest period of my professional life. I mean, because you would have obviously been grieving as well. So you're doing the storyline, you're grieving. Did did it help with the grief in the sense of gives you more of an idea on that you know on that situation, for example? Because you'd have had to have done a lot of research. So <laughs> did it give you any answers in any way? I think grief. Uh, I do a lot of work now with with grief charities, yeah, and, so. and um, I'm a firm believer in grief being a process that is about acceptance. And I what I think I found hard was actually looking back. I think with a better, clearer mind now, I can say this. 
um, I wasn't allowing myself to heal because I wanted the show to prosper. Yeah. Um, and I wanted my performance to, to, to really give back. And it was almost, it was almost selfish from my part because it was like, I wanted to respect what I'd been through, but in doing so and not allowing myself to maybe access a little bit more guidance, um, I, I was damaging myself probably, which is absolutely not the fault of anybody, but, but, but me, you know, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was tough. It was tough. It was tough, but, um, we reap the rewards, <laughs> you know, the, 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 we really, really did. And, and as a, as a crew and a cast, we, we had some amazing moments. We really did. The reason I asked you the question about, you know, any storylines that affected you is because sometimes you watch the show and it, you know, it's good. You have it on in the background and it's nice, but when you would watch your performances, that especially for me being a fan of the show, it would really kind of catch you. You think, wow, you know, there was so much emotion in the performance. You kind of, you're just drawn in and you watch every moment. And that's why I, you know, I asked the question because you just give off so much. With, and the same with Gillian, you know, you just have this way of connecting mm. with an audience. So Thank you. are you aware of that yourself? No, <laughs> uh, no. I mean, hearing it is obviously, thank you. It's incredibly kind. Um, I, it's it's very hard and important to leave ego at the door as an actor. Ego is is the 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 thing that makes you weak. Um, and I think if you start to indulge, this is why I don't watch a lot of it back because if you start to indulge and get complacent and go, I'm the best actor in the world. That's obviously not what I'm saying, but I'm giving you the hypothesis. Um, then then you will stop working as hard. And then if if you watch it and go, I'm the worst actor in the world, then you want to give it up. Yeah, and so I try and I try and steer clear too much of that. And, and then we put it on in the green room for when you <laughs> entered it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the first time I've seen it. <laughs> um, a lot of us here will agree, and I think a lot of the fans would agree, you're the best and most popular Ben Mitchell. You know, you, you the storylines, the performance. So that's why it was such a shock this year when it was announced that you were leaving the show. And the BBC's announcement was very brief, and there were multiple reports that you left, that you were asked to leave. What's the truth with that? <laughs> Were you sacked from the show or did you walk away? Um, look, I, I, I think um, the important thing was, was, was my time. Was, my time was ready. I was ready. I was very tired. Um, and like I said, I, I, was, I, wasn't, um, I wasn't me. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't. The Mac sat in front of you today was kind of a, a ghost. Um, and, and they recognised that. I recognised that. And we both kind of, you know, I still keep in contact with it, with everyone there, all the producers, and, yeah. and uh, you know, we we spoke about a possible return one day, and and that was in, in immediate in in the meeting in which it was it was penned that I'd be going, you know, um, it it was it was it was time for a rest, you know, five years of you know so many episodes. I did, I think, nearly 600 episodes in five yeah. years, which is a hell of a lot. Um, and it was time for a rest. The character was tired. I was tired. They were probably tired of me being tired. <laughs> and, and I think, you know, from, a, from an honest perspective, I think, yeah, a lot of it was, was, that, was that I needed to go for a bit. I needed to go. I needed to go and work on me, get yeah. myself back to a place of really good mental health, um, focus on healing uh, and also be a dad and yeah. just just be present in my son's life and watch him grow and in doing so give me something that's not selfish you know not not become immediately about what's happened and focus on what will be um, and and you know in in my last eight months of sort of growth as we call it but I, I live by this sort of motto every day which is this too shall pass you think think you know tom hanks said it recently in an interview you think something's really good yeah this too will pass you think your life's about to end and shit's hitting the fan this too yeah. will pass and and that is something that i carry daily and and that sort of mindset couldn't have happened whilst i was still allowing myself to suffer but obviously we now know from what you've just said that obviously they were the reasons why mm. you left the show. So is it difficult for you when you see a, a paper article saying that you were 
uh, sacked because of a bad attitude or sacked because of this and that, when actually you had taken some time out, and rightly so, when you were kind of not overworked, but I mean, you were constant big storylines. So yeah, is it difficult I mean, to read those? Look, reports? do you know what? Do you know what? It's it's uh, when I wasn't kind of feeling great myself, I was I was a lot angrier at, at the at the press side of things than than I do sat here now because I, I kind of have this appreciation and realization of it. You know, everyone's doing a job. Yeah. Everyone's doing a job. And, and, you know, there was a level of public interest in, in what was going on because like you say, people have associated with the character. It's not, it's not anybody's fault. Um, and also resentment and bitterness is, is just, it's toxic. Yeah. So I, I kind of, from a present standpoint, I have no bitterness or resentment. It's, it's, it's hard when you're in it. It's yeah. the immediacy of it, you know? Um, but you know, a lot of, a lot of it I'd brought on myself, you know, and, and that, that's, that's me being honest. I was again, just, just very, um, very scarred and very vulnerable and not dealing with things in the, in the most positive way. So yeah, from, from that stance, yeah. When you're there and you're in, in the immediate, it's difficult, but, I, I look back now and I go, everyone's doing a job, you know? If you, if the phone rang in a couple of years' time and the storyline was right, would you go back? Hey, look, never say never. Never That's always the answer. Yeah, That's well, the- <laughs> it's, it's the most politically correct way to put it. You know, um, I, look, I, I, I still, like I say, I still yeah. have an immense sense of gratitude and an immense sense of love for the place. That building was my home yeah. for five years. And I mean, when I say home... I quite literally mean my home. I was there every single day. And I made some of the greatest relationships and bonds that, that I could have ever asked for. So I, I you know, I, to, for me to ever sit there and go, I'd never go back would be completely, would be a complete false fact. And also it would be a real uh, disrespect to what they gave me. Well, you're still, I know, close to a lot of the cast. Last night you were on video call quite late to Jamie, who of course plays Jay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and <laughs> on the phone to Steve. I mean, you and Steve are very close. I mean, you've got a, a good bond. And you we actually have, yeah. come down here with him? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. We have, he, he loves he loves, he loves Cornwall. Um, yeah, so we, 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 we generally would, would come down once a year with Steve. Um, yeah, he's, he's, nice. he's great. Steve, Steve's great. Well, you've, you know, you have become a father. So when you found out the news and you were told that you were going to be a dad, what was your initial reaction? Um, shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, do you know what? It's, 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 it's crazy. It's, it's something that, um, that you don't, I, it, was, it wasn't necessarily expected, but, uh, but it, it was nerves. It was yeah. nerves. And it's, it's I, I, I kind of try and focus quite a lot now on being, watching a lot of content about being a parent and, and being a better role model. And it's kind of that, that thing of trying to make them be nothing like you. And then the good bits try and make them be everything like you. And, um, my son has got an amazing mum, a really, really amazing mum. And she's, she's really, really great mum. Um, so I, I feel like stepping up to the plate was always yeah just a necessity. And it, 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 it probably took me a little minute to get my head around it. Um, but now it's the greatest, greatest gift I've ever had. You know, it, it, he is just my pride and joy. It really is. How has being a father changed you? Like, what have you noticed where you're like, wow, when you look back before you were a dad, so now, yeah. what are the biggest changes for you? I think compassion a lot more. Um, patience, definitely. <laughs> definitely patience. Um, I, yeah, I think, I think uh, comp- empathy. It's, it's, it's funny, isn't it? It's like I said earlier, I think it, I, I had this, had this tendency certainly when I was a little bit younger to, to be perhaps not as present, not as present and not as forward thinking. And, and, uh, as a dad, I th- don't think you've got that time. Um, and I think it's one of the greatest gifts that anybody could ever possibly get, which is, is to be able to influence somebody making better decisions. Um, and you know, I'm I'm blessed. I'm blessed in that. Like I, I I get to be that guy. I get to be that role model for my for my son. Well, family is a big thing for you, and I know you've got an amazing relationship with your nan. I mean, <laughs> Shane was. Uh, I might not about... now. I've been gone for three days. <laughs> She'll be fuming. What What's your relationship like with your nan? Because you you do seem like best friends. You know, we are. Yeah, we're best friends. We're best friends. She's she's the the gift that keeps on giving. 
Um, she's 85 and she's still the hardest woman I've ever met. <laughs> she's, uh, we live together, you yeah. know, we live together and, and um, nobody on the planet, bar maybe my son, makes me happier. And I think, I hope, vice versa. If I get yeah. home and she's fuming, then I know that <laughs> we'll cut this out. Um, what's next for you now? Because obviously you've gone from strength to strength and we know just how versatile of an actor you are. So what, what's next for you project-wise? What are you working on? Well, I'm on, I'm on the road as of next month. Um, I'm doing a play, which is great. I'm going back to the roots. Um, and... And then, you know, very much like every actor, it's back to the drawing board, I suppose, after that, and, and kind of look at, look at what I want. Um, I, I think I will probably take a little bit of time out after this just, to, just because, you know, I'm away again for six months now yeah. and, and um, I don't want to miss too much of, of yeah. my son's sort of uh, life. So uh, hopefully a job that will keep me local would yeah. be nice for a bit. And then, um, and then, yeah, we'll see. If Strictly or The Jungle came calling... What would your answer be? Could we see you fox trotting or eating kangaroo testicles? Uh, I've eaten worse. <laughs> um, look, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, look, um, it, I think, but I love watching both. Um, yeah. I've got friends that have done both, obviously. I think they're amazing experiences. Um, it would just have to be the right time. You know, I'd have to feel like it was the right move for my career and yeah. and for my family. and and. Um, I know it's cliche, but never say never. <laughs> well, Max, honestly, thank you so much for joining us today because I know you don't do a lot of these, but you're an incredible actor and even better guy. So thank you for joining thank us you. on the show. Appreciate thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. This interview has been proudly brought to you by the Cornwall Hotel and Spa, the perfect base to unwind, rejuvenate, enjoy time with family and explore Cornwall.